This is going to be a uh, flint ridge spear uh, changeable point. Now what I'm going to do is uh, saw two parallel slots and then dig them out with a stone tool and then shape it with the stone tool. But the sawing, this is hard iron wood. It'd take a while to uh, scrape with wood. Hammerstone I found. my flint hand axe, some tools, a piece of black fort pane, and a piece of uh, horse creek. We're going to take this stick and we're going to make a spear point. We're going to inset it to about here so that it'll slide into a uh, cane spear shaft. Okay, tonight what we're going to do is use either this blade I already made to make a uh, spear four shaft for, for my walking stick. Or we're going to finish working this mookite. Or we're going to do a piece of uh, a horse creek jerk. That's the plans. So first I'm going to finish the point, so or finish the blade, so I can uh, make my point to fit. I hope you stay in view. Because uh, I'm not using my little camera, I can't see where you are. And uh, I've got you there. I think I know where you are. Um... I want to say thanks to everybody because, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm over a thousand, a thousand subs, which I never thought it would even come close because honestly, um, I just kind of fumble my way through this because I wanted a, a recorded history of stuff I do for my grandson and, and his grandson or, you know, whatever grandchildren I may have. So I just basically be me on camera. I don't fancy it up or, you know, practice to make things perfect and stuff like that. I just do it. And however it turns out, you know, it turns out. So um, I'm going to try and... Uh, this is a seasoned ironwood. I got green ironwood the other day, and if this is too hard, I might, uh, you know, change over to it. But I've cut some slots down to make me a guide. And, uh, you know, this is how you would do it with stone. You just whittle down a little, whittle down a little, and then, you know, flake it out. And I think I'm going to make me a chisel, a chisel tip blade. Let's see if we can do that. <clears throat> I've got my real, real hammerstone here. And a piece of uh, black Fort Payne chert. And uh, I'm going to try and take a flake that'll wrap and be a point. There we go. Oh, it smells like gunpowder. You can see I made a, a nice handily thing. And it's got a chiseler tip where I can get in there and uh, work that wood out. Like such. This wood is really hard. It's not called iron wood for, uh, you know, for the fun of it.
this is going to take a while. I'm going to quit filming and I'll come back when I've got the uh, notch, uh, you know, done out. Okay, now I've got a uh, flat, thinner piece of, uh, this is Georgetown Flint. It's really good stuff. And uh, I've almost got this worked out. You can see. It's just getting it in there and chiseling it out. A little bit at a time. Now, the good thing is, when this breaks, it breaks to a new sharp edge. Now I'm going to see how this, uh, this Horse Creek, this is a Horse Creek point I made a couple weeks ago. That actually fits in there rather nicely. Uh, I think I'm going to go with that. Now you can see, um, I need to work this bottom out a little more to get it centered. And I cut my slot a little too wide for this blade. So we might end up going with this. Uh, oh, yeah, that mookite. Yeah, that mookite will be the way to go. And that's going to be a beautiful uh, spear tip on a four shaft right there. Okay, I'll be back once I got this fitted and then I'll... Do some flint napping uh, to get it to shape, and uh, we'll put it in a handle. Okay, now I'm not 100% caveman, so I'm going to use this uh, rasp, this round rasp to, uh, you know, I think it's reasonable that anybody would want to use a rasp to work this out. It's still not super fast like using uh, you know, power tools, but that's how I rasp. Here's the rough idea. You can see my mookite actually fits, and uh, so I'm going to work on this point for a little bit. Get my uh, indirect. This here is 3 8 copper. Now, I have an antler one, okay? And I would love to use it, but I can never get antler to work. It's always too soft. <coughs> I don't know if it's the deer I harvest or what, but it's just too soft. Um, so I, you know, I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And, uh, come on. So what I need to do, as you can see, I've got one side flat. That was where I quit. I've got to thin this other side out a little. Try and make a nice uh, pointy point. Something that a caveman would be proud of. If I can. Um, Boy, the brain 
more. I'll take this glove off. It's messing me up. I normally don't nap with gloves on, and they uh, they really mess me up. I'm actually cheating a little there and trying to trying to take too much at one time, but I don't want to lose so much width on this. I love whenever I use that uh, that old hammer stone on the flint. It smells it smells so much like sparking a fire. There we got a good one. A little bit of an overshot. But I'm risking breaking it on every one of these because this is, you can see there's a crack there and a crack there. It's uh, pretty risky. But I want to get them good flakes like that. See, once you get a flake you can go off of, you can do them, you know, too much flakes. they will uh, follow that mostly unless you got a little boogery area Not wanting to go right there. There's where that crack meets. There we go. Let's see our handle. We thinned out if we fit any better. Yeah. That's a pretty good fit right there. Well, I'm going to do the pressure flaking to make it into a point, and then uh, I'll be back. All right. We had a crack open up, so we're a little bit smaller but we're still plenty big for my spear point. And you can see, isn't that a beautiful piece of mookite? I'll be back. I'm going to sharpen the edges.
I've had this piece sitting around for a while because all them beautiful colors, just like in Flint Ridge, means problems. You know, snappy lines, crunchy, crunchy rock. It's not as bad as Flint Ridge though because there's not really uh, quartz pockets in it. Well, guys, there's a, this seam that runs through here just keeps chipping out when I go to straighten it up. So I'm going to have to give up on this piece of mookite. And go with this killer piece of Flint Ridge. Uh, I've already done the napping for it before. I've had this in my collection for a while. So it'll be pretty quick to uh, make the spear point. Okay, I've actually sharpened my uh, spatula blade into like a chisel. And I'm going to clean out the bottom of this notch. Hopefully. This wood is so hard. I usually do this when it's green, but I've had this for so long, it's not, uh, you know, it's obviously not green anymore. Yeah, that, that ought to be flat enough. Put our point in, we've got plenty of room for glue, plenty of room for straightening. So, I think we're good to go, I'm going to start heating up the glue. After I put a couple of notches, shallow notches in this point. You can't see. How do I know you can't see? Because I can't see either. <laughs> That's about all I'm going. I don't want to risk breaking this. Um, so that's how I do notches. Now look at this. That one went perfect. The first one stalled out. I think I'm going to widen it and try to refix it. They're not perfectly matched, but they are much better. Come on, camera. All right, let's see how it looks with the handle. And I might go ahead and just carve a new handle. Oh, looky there. That's like a perfect, perfect match. Okay, now this point was too thin for this half. So what I've done is I've taken a couple pieces of leather and I've forced it in. It's tight. It would actually hold like that. Now I'm going to trim around here to make it look neat and then uh, wrap it with sinew real tight and put a uh, groove across the, uh, the, the uh, ta tong tangs here so that I can wrap into it with uh, leather and I might do a spiral down the handle. But that's how it's, this is natural spalting on, under the bark. 
So I decided to keep that because I think it looks awesome. Got me a sharp little flake here. I'm going to do some trimming. It's uh, having a hard time in the notch area. There we go. And then trim this down. this down okay I think I have some black artificial sinew I'm going to wrap this with and then I'm going to taper this uh, end, probably about two inches, to fit into my uh, walking, hiking stick. And then I'll have a knife slash spear. Nearly done. <laughs> Looking good. It's uh, Flint Ridge, ironwood spalted, natural coloring under there. Uh, with the leather padding brace. And I'm going to wrap it with uh, artificial sinew. Because I think the black will just pop on this. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, like my compound arrow, I'm going to shave this down and put this into my, uh, my spear. Here, I'll try and give you a full view of how long this is. It goes clear down there. It's going to be a walking staff. Slash spear and uh, so this will be set in the handle and uh, you know, I'll have uh, a lanyard and I can pull this out and it will be a knife and, and this would become a bow staff if you know what a bow staff is you all be uh, you get extra points, but There we go a walking spear with uh, self-defense capabilities Oh, this is an important thing when you're doing these uh compound things my way try and make sure you have the same size so that when you fit it together it's pretty much seamless now you can bet this point this down and stick it in there um, and have a little lump I guess it wouldn't really matter but I like to uh, cut a shoulder and actually fit it in the socket my walking spear is taking shape and it has a detachable knife which I'm going to tie a cord there and put like six foot of cord here. So it could also be a harpoon. Um, should be interesting. Okay, I've uh, fitted it up to that mark. You can see it'll slide in with a little snug. That's how we want, a little snug. And uh, now the way to make it fit tightly is to keep going a little bit at a time. But I reversed my whittling up to this stop point. See that stops me from going too far. Just go a little bit at a time. Keep it even. Give it a try. Still to the same point. So we'll whittle a little down in the back. Because that cavity gets smaller as it goes. So we can make sure we don't get too small in the front. And we'll work this some more. I 
I like this method because I can see the diameter all the way around and know that I am circular. Okay, <laughs> the moment of truth. Here's my uh, knife. Instantly becomes a spear. Uh, I'm going to give you a shot of it down the length. There we go. Bow staff, I mean spear, knife, and bow staff. That's it.